pump is one of the most basic and fundamental things when it comes to building muscle. Arnold swore by it. He purposely performed supersets in the gym to create an even bigger pump during his training. Guys like Serge Nubre, they would focus their entire training session on getting a better pump. His goal when entering the gym was one main objective, to get as much blood into the muscle as possible and to keep it there as long as possible. But it's not just bodybuilders. I think everyone fundamentally relates weight training with muscle pumps. How many times have you heard the average person say, you look pumped up? Regardless, we can go back literally 50 years where guys would talk extensively on the importance of a muscle pump for building muscle mass. Yet today, the second we speak about it, all the internet experts jump in on the comment section saying something like, the pump doesn't build muscle. It's been scientifically proven that the pump doesn't matter. Some variation of either. Regardless, even the scientific community will come here and say, that's not necessarily true. Now, it is a different time from the 70s, and bodybuilding science and information has come a long way since the days of pumping iron. But if we actually leave the internet and social media, we actually go and talk to guys who put in the work. They put in the years and the decades, and they've actually accomplished a high level in the sport of bodybuilding. They will all tell you the pump is an important part of training. And today, I'm gonna explain exactly why, but more importantly, why you shouldn't dismiss its benefits. But in the case that you have no idea what I'm talking about, in simple terms, muscle pumps are when you perform repetitions of an exercise, the target muscle that you're training is being filled or pumped with blood. After performing multiple repetitions, the pump temporarily stays in the muscle, and up to a certain point, the more reps you perform and the more sets you perform, the greater the pump. But now let's talk about some of the benefits this has. First, it brings nutrient-dense blood into the muscle. You ever have a high carbohydrate, high sodium meal, maybe a cheat meal, then you went to the gym and you hit a single body part extremely hard? I bet you've experienced a massive pump probably greater than any one typical workout can produce. This is because you're training hard after a meal like this, your body has to put those carbs and those calories somewhere. They can be stored as body fat, but they can also be stored as glycogen in the liver or stored in the muscle. This is called the nutrient partitioning effect. Guys who generally weight train regularly and are leaner, they generally maximize the amount of nutrients stored inside the muscle. If you wanna learn more about this process, just look it up. But the question really is, how does this benefit us when we're looking to build more muscle? Although progressive overload and mechanical tension are much greater factors for muscle growth. This increased nutrient partitioning effect 100% increases the look of the physique. When your muscles are constantly storing the max amount of glycogen inside the muscle, it'll give them a more full, round, and pumped appearance. I can't tell you how many times I had clients who started working with me coming from a typical one body part per week training split. I switched them over to a higher frequency approach, and within a week or two, they're already reporting that they feel and look much bigger and fuller. Some even say it feels like they have a permanent pump. And now, while there is a ceiling to how much pump training can benefit this process, if you're not maximizing your pumps in the gym, you're probably also not fully maximizing your physique. This is one of the many reasons if you take, let's say, a 200 pound lean bodybuilder and compare them side by side with a 200 pound lean power lifter, when you look at them, the bodybuilder just has a more muscular appearance. They might even have the same total lean body mass, but visibly, you can see a difference. But now let's also talk about some of the secondary benefits a muscle pump has. First, a pump to the target muscle is reassurance that the exercise you're doing is being performed correctly. It's also reassurance that the exercise you're even using is beneficial at all. Some people might say, hey Pete, I know that barbell rows are an excellent exercise for the back, but when I perform them, I just don't feel it in the target muscles. If that's you, I would challenge you to first use a movement that gets you a great pump. Let's say that you feel a really good contraction in mind muscle connection on something for the lats like a cable pullover. Perform those first, then go do your heavy barbell rows after. I'm willing to bet that if you go and you get a massive pump first, it's gonna establish a much greater mind muscle connection on the barbell rows later. Now, that might not build more muscle on paper, but I'll tell you what, anytime that we create a better mind muscle connection, we create better technique, more mechanical tension, we then cause more muscle hypertrophy. So it's not always about just looking at something on paper and saying it works or completely ruling it out. You have to ask yourself, how does this actually benefit me in the real world? But let's say you don't even care about any of this stuff and you just wanna know, how do I build more muscle by taking advantage of muscle pumps? Here's a few practical takeaways from this. First, don't exclude high rep training from your program. I've talked a lot about progressive overload on key basic movements being the most beneficial for muscle growth, and I'll always repeat that. But that doesn't mean you should only be progressive in the five to 10 rep range. You should be progressive in all rep ranges. 
five to 10, even 10 to 20. The key is just picking the appropriate exercise for the rep range. If you're benching heavy, let's say for five to 10 repetitions, you'll also want to take advantage of another exercise that you could progressively overload in higher rep ranges. Something like a dumbbell or a cable fly will work much better for higher repetitions. But doing these for higher reps also fills the gap of any pump training that might be neglected by training the bench press with just lower reps. So remember, you're not just doing flies to get an additional pump. You should still be aiming for progressive overload, but doing them in a higher repetition range accomplishes both. Takeaway number two, if you're not establishing a good mind muscle connection or a pump on a movement, try Try placing it after a movement that you've had a good pump on. Exercise order can be a game changer here. For me personally, it takes a very long time for me to warm up my legs and my entire posterior chain. If I walked in the gym cold and went right into heavy RDLs, it would take me a long time to warm up and the result would also be less mind muscle connection and less ideal reps on these heavy RDLs. That's why I personally start my leg training with high rep hamstring curls. I do multiple sets of high reps to really get the blood flowing and into the muscles. Then when I move on to heavy RDLs, my mind muscle connection is through the roof. Every rep I perform is with a great technique, my injury risk is lower, and the muscle building benefits are all higher. And finally, if you're performing any exercise above, let's say five to eight repetitions, and you're not getting a muscle pump, that's an indicator that something's wrong. That's a clear sign that you're not performing the movement correctly, or you're just not getting much of a benefit out of that exercise at all. And if this is happening, you should adjust accordingly. Now, take what you want from this video and apply it to your training. But there's one thing that I wanna stress here as I close out. That is that it might be fun to talk about all the nuanced details of training online. And it might feel great to think that you know everything because of everything that you read online. But if you truly want results, you have to put in the time and the effort to acquire real firsthand experience rather than secondhand knowledge. And if you look at all the greatest bodybuilders, athletes, or anyone who's on top of their game, none of them follow a set of textbook rules that they read online. They may have gotten some ideas, but ultimately their success lies on executing and applying the things that work, and more importantly, discarding all the things that are useless. So before you rule anything out, I recommend you test it for yourself and then make up your own mind. And if you want the training programs that I personally recommend to build muscle using proven old school bodybuilding methods, all my old school mass game programs are down below. And as always, if you guys want to see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.